Alrighty then, so we are connected and rock and roll. Yes, let's rock and roll. Okay. Um, I'm not, we have several things um, <clears throat> on the list. Alicia had sent you an email yesterday. Um, and I guess let's just start with um, kind of that little email thread that you and I had going about the in transit items. And you had mentioned um, a response to me about auto verify. And right. I don't, don't know what that is, but let me let me just e explain to you or ask you: Are there other ways that we can be doing these slips aside from just? doing the vouchers and doing um, this transfer verification? Well, there, there's two major decisions. There's two major settings, two major choices, I guess, in, in configuration. So let's back up and make sure we understand those options. Yes, exactly. That's why I would just want to have this conversation. So. Right, so right here, um, this is the choice right here. So right, we're set to ASN that causes us to have to do the ASN and receive it, right? If we set it to auto verify, yes. then when we make the outslip, it would generate the ASN and it would be automatically pushed through the system and there would be no follow-up. So thus, if you set to auto verify, then it's assumed that it's getting there and there's no verification and there's no transfer verification. Correct. And so then if we went, if we chose to go with the auto verify method and Arches got an order and it said that they got 50 stickers and they got 100, then they would notify us and we would just create another transfer to correct that issue of 50 Correct. More so an, an, another way to phrase that would be that you'd be operating without a safety net. And if there was a problem, then they need to speak up, and then we can easily correct it e either way, overage or shortage. We just got to know about it. Right. Well, and I so mean, this did, is, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I, so the problem really isn't with Arches or, or Island or the MIC. It's with these more remote sites that aren't very good in creating their vouchers <laughs> and or getting back to us. Um, and because of the poll with the polling issues that we've had that it, it's just not really working at these remote sites And so I'm just right. looking for a fix and I guess well, it's I mean The bigger question here is is and this is an old discussion Is it more work to have all the people in the field doing the verifications or is it is it more work to just follow up on the ones that are broken? You know, I don't know the answer to that one well, so that was my next question, but it's an either all, it's an either or situation, correct? Or can these be set? This can it be set for for each store? It cannot. Can no, it's it, it, no, it really can't because any store could transfer to any store, right? So, right. So no, you need to have this. This I can't imagine running half the company with it on and half the company with it off. That would be, I mean, I guess there could we could explore that. I've never had a company try that. Okay. So, Jeff, this yep. that Alicia is working on with uh, making the polling go through more, um, more than once a day at these remote outlets. Would that help with Sam's problem at all? He wasn't here that day. It might. I mean, you know, the solution that I suggested that, that Nick and her are working on is just is bracketing the polling with right. manual polling so that. You know, when they've got a down minute, they can just click a shortcut and it, it'll just fire off and, and, and try and update so that you're not trying to take the whole lump at the end of the day. Right. Uh, and then we're, basically we were putting all our eggs in one basket, one polling cycle, that, and we're hoping that it's going to be successful. Whereas if they do one in the morning and they do one as they're counting the money out or something, you know what I mean, at the end of the day, then, uh, then they have the scheduled one at night. Then you've got three chances at least to get all the data through. Right. That's exactly. really all, all we're doing. Right. So, so part of this whole discussion is, is in transit because that seems to be where some of this bog down is happening as well. And I thought that once the ASN voucher had been created and it pulled back here, that it was putting that inventory, that product into their inventory 
and that it wouldn't be in transit anymore, but it still shows in transit until we do the transfer verification. And I didn't think that was the case. Um, yeah, that's a dicey one. I think that is how it's supposed to work, though. I think it's supposed to be, you know, sort of, I mean, there is, um, well, there's, 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 there's in the, in the technician's toolkit, there is a, um, a setting to update in transit. So you can easily go and update the in transit if you're feeling like it's not reporting correctly. There's also in system preferences, uh, there is a setting for in transit down here. So maybe we should set these up, you know what I mean? And say, you know, like if I'm transferring, um, you know, from 11 to 16, right? How many days does it take to get there? When should it fall out of in transit? Right. Well, and those can be set, those can all be different settings. Like, I, I mean, so for instance, our 12 and 13, they get orders every day. And they're doing, I mean, they have, they get their order and they've completed their voucher within three hours after it gets there. So, so basically you'd say that these are one day in transit. Or same day, basically, right? Yeah, the same day, exactly. But and, and I, if they, if you make it to the A and they haven't done their stuff and we haven't gotten their ASN back, it should fall out of in transit tomorrow, right? One day. Right. Well, I, uh, yeah. This is where it gets dicey because, and this is where we ran into problems earlier this year, not with these guys. Again, it's more the remote stores where um, they weren't. So... Let me back up. So if we set for, go back to 16, for instance, and if we set it for, um, to fall out on over three days, right? And they did not get their voucher back to me in that time period, and we ran another order for them, then it's gonna, um, it's, it's gonna pull those items again. That's dicey. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, very dicey. That's the middle. Well, I think you think you're going to have to test that and see. I mean, uh, the point was in, in in previous versions is that when this expired, it was supposed to go into their inventory. You know, it was supposed to be in transit until it was till it was till that time expired. That it was supposed to go into their inventory. Now, with the ASN vouchers, I've I've never tested that theory. Um, I certainly know that in in version eight. You know the inslip never affected anything anyway. Right. So in, in transit held the outslip back until that time expired, and then let the outslip finish its job basically. So um, unsure with the with the ASN vouchers how that really work. should work the same way. And when that time expires, it should go into their inventory. But you know I would I would say that we would have to test it to be sure because I'm not that trusting. And how, how would we test it? Well, you'd have to, you know, send something to the store and, and watch it, you know. You could, you, could set, you could set 16 to one day or something, send to them something to them and let it fall out, you know, and then maybe wait two days and test it to see if it's showing us on hand or not. But in theory, we could set them all to one day. I mean, there's, sure. there's no reason not to based on what I'm hearing, right? I mean, I mean, we had it set for one day. If we, so for instance, um, we pulled 16 today. We're shipping it to them. It gets there tomorrow night. And then, and then in the real world, they would create their, their voucher on um, Thursday morning. Yeah, it's two days. Well, so it's two days. But does it matter? Yeah, two days, but, you know. Why do you have to make it two days? I get what you're saying. Right. Does does that even matter? Well, I mean, if it does go into their inventory when the when the, as as what as it did in eight series, it would be in their inventory as soon as that time expired, or when they made their inslip. Right. So it should work the same way in version nine. We'd all like to think so anyway. That that either the the um, ASN voucher when it, when you process that, it takes it out of in transit, 
or when this time expires, takes it out of in transit. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I would want them to be as accurate as possible. If if the normal if the the normal shipping, the average shipping time is two days to get there, then it should be set to two. I mean, right. Well, that's what we could do. Then is on all these remotes, um, we could set them to two and have just like we have right here. We have one, uh, 12, 13, and 17 set to one. And then, you know, you just, you just click in there and change it. Is that all you do? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's all you do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's all you do. Okay. And then, um, okay. No, from the, the zero, send anything out? Um, not triple zero, no. Gotcha. So, I mean, so then, what if so? What if twelve transfers something to someone? You know, what I mean, what if? I mean, you'd want to fill in all these. If you're going to fill them in, you'd want to say, you know. Okay, so if twelve is sending something, and Island's sending something, it's still. I'm so, that, so that's zero. That's that's from zero to twelve, oh. which is maybe okay. I mean, maybe that's a good thing to have. Um, so we're, I mean, right. So, oh, well, I would set those to two because if things are coming back and that's kind of a checks and balance on, to have those, that's not as big. Yeah, as I was wondering if we shouldn't just set all the other ones to two and call it good. I mean, well, well, no, because we pull orders from them every day. And so, if right, but, if, but if it's coming back from 14 to oh. uh, 11, for instance, it might take two days to get back where it only right. takes a day to get over. I thought when you said the other ones, because I did just set all those to two. Oh, no, I said, you need I, to do all this I need to do every column. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> keep going down. Right. I was going down instead of across. Isn't right. It? I mean, there's, there's all those different settings out there, but I think that that the only one that's critical is the one we've already done. The one coming from 11 to those stores is, is clearly different, but the, uh, coming back, yeah, coming back, they could pick the stuff and process it and not ship it for three days because they forgot. But, and, well, normally coming back too is just not that much product. It's a damaged or, or something we needed for a mail order or. Right. It's, it's exceptions, not normal. Exactly. You missed that one. Okay. So do I have to go and do all these all these down right? Okay. This is this is your store. I mean these are the right? Yeah, I would. I mean the only ones that we're skipping is zero because zero is not in use, right? Well we do actually we do do triple zero, um, but those I think we want them to stay there. Yeah. We want to stay there because that's. So, but we, do we transfer to triple zero? We do for for all of our sites that are not on Retail Pro. Triple zero is kind of like a holding tank until then. We do an adjustment memo to take it out of there and put it in a spreadsheet. And so we do we do transfer to triple zero but it's gotcha so i think i think having that set to so that they're still showing in transit to triple zero is actually a good thing until it's well should out. they should they be set to one then because i mean you're managing on your end but still there's there's time it takes to manage that process well i want it um no i would set it to like six or seven so that they're there's yeah stay in there until we get a chance to deal with them that's why i was leaving it at zero because they would be there if we had it set at zero it would stay it would still be an in transit until we finalize that whole slip gotcha yeah no, I just, i'd say that's fine yeah yeah so that's so we'll leave that one at zero and it's only it's only between 11 and triple zero. None of the other stores go to triple zero at all, or, or nothing goes from triple zero to the other stores. It's just 11 back and forth. Right. Okay. All right. So, update. update? Yes, update. Yes. 
Okay. So that's like the best we're going to get unless we consider turning off uh, the whole the whole ASN thing and going back to uh, and the auto verify, which would then change the rules and there would be no more ASNs out in the field. Well, let me let's let's play with this for a little while and see if that helps clear up um, some of the issues and and see also if this polling that Alicia's working on clears up some of the issues. I hope so. Uh, and Nick was working on it. I went over and checked with him a few minutes ago for the call because, you know, I, I was thinking I had half an hour. So it's like, you know, five after and I walked over. I'm like, you know, uh, see what he's working on, make sure everything's going. And he was, he had the batch file up and they were trying to make, test it and make sure it's working. So. Right. Because right now, I mean, just as of a week ago, I've kind of taken that safety net away until we get it ironed out anyway because we're just, and in essence, we are auto verifying because for these remote stores, we are creating the voucher as soon as we're sending the order. Well, right Again, for 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 the ones that are offline and for the for the for those remote stores on modem, it's just it's too correct. much of a pain to, to get them to do it. Correct. So we'll we'll um, we'll see we'll monitor it and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, and and if. If at the end of the day it comes down to it, then maybe maybe auto verify is better. If you can, if the, you know you gotta you gotta put some good good practices in place for the um, stores that are big that you're doing a lot of transferring to that you know because then you're operating without a safety net there too. Well, we do. Uh, I mean, we do have a system in place where they still notify. I mean, they still check in the order and they check it in against the transfer slip, and then they go and generate their voucher. And so there is a checks and balances, and they they still do notify us, even though that if, if there's something was off, they're fixing it on their voucher, but they still notify us of what that problem was. So it, it, I mean, it's similar to how we were doing things years ago, but um, if we don't have to do it that way, I'd prefer not to. Well, then I guess the next question would be, um, how often do you think? Uh, auto verify, or excuse me, transfer verification catches something that they haven't called out. You know what I mean? Um, that's a good question. In version eight, it, I noticed it um, sometimes. And version nine, to be honest, there's been so much going on that I haven't really identified it at this point. Well, that's, that's the question. So. If they're, if they're calling out every time that they have an inequity and then they're logging it on their ASN, which we need them to do, but the, the, my question would be then, isn't that redundant? If, if they're calling it out as a problem and they're logging it, I mean, logging it is, is essentially the communication method that is required, right? And if they log it, they shouldn't have to make a phone call. But if they're going to make the phone call anyway, should we just go with auto verify and, and then when they call we fix it and when they don't we don't no no because um well they're emailing the, the we have a slip correction form and they email it but that's adding a step i mean if they're correcting it on their or if end they're, if they're correcting it on their end um are. then yeah. that makes it nice for you in auto verif in, in transfer verification Right, uh, but if they're calling you, no, they're, I guess. they're they're creating their voucher. They're updating their voucher, and they're just giving us a heads up that hey, this was off on the voucher. Yeah, I see what you mean. So then, then do you know about it? But you don't have to react right then. You could go, you could go on with the task you're working on, and you know it's out there in, in transfer verification to it, be fixed. It, when exactly. exactly, and then once I'm trying to get everybody in the warehouse to update their transfer verification every morning. You know, that's the first thing they do. Come in and just do your transfer verifications. And at least then if there's a difference, we know why. And we know like, oh, we, they notified us. This is off and we can see it right there and make sure that that, that that does match what they said. And then we move, you know, resolve it and move forward. So it sounds like it's working correctly then and that we shouldn't really be um, it turning is. it off just yet. Correct, exactly. And I would that's what I'm saying. I would rather not turn it off, but it's just the transfer verification. I'm mean, sorry, the in transit was still showing up 
on transfer verification until transfer verification was updated. And that's the difference between eight, one of the differences in eight and nine. I thought once they created their voucher, boom, it was there, but it, it's not until the update huh. happens. Yeah, it does seem odd. It seems like it should be, um, seems like it should fall out of in transit when they make their, their, um, yeah, I would agree with you on that, by the way. Yeah, and you were with me when we noticed. I mean, that was kind of when it, what, what brought it up, because you're going, why is it still right. showing there? And, you know, right. so anyway, well, I'll monitor it a little more and we'll see what's going on. So, next. Um, well, X, the X out. Yeah. So, Julie's oh. up next. So, Jeff, all of, all of a sudden, um, doing a Z out and at the stores, the X out, the credit cards and the debit cards at the at the re, at the stores are not the total is correct but the individual entries are incorrect and then here at the main doing an z out even though none of the credit cards are checked there's a automatic it just puts some random total in there that like you've already checked a box that's that amount That so sense. like we, we if we run in one of these here for you know a a day yes it's fine um it's going to give us some some random information that we're not looking for Do you want to see? Yeah. so now you mean at the end at the end here in this in in this oh, section or is it as you're going through the steps, I don't know what you had up there. <laughs> you got, you got well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't filter this. I ran this pretty much wide open, so we're gonna get, we're gonna get a lot in this. <laughs> yeah. So you know when you get to the credit card screen and you can either say match all in the box, or you have to go gotcha. through and, and check each one. When you get to gotcha. that, screen, oh, nothing's matched. There's a random amount in there. Not so we turn we we turned it off in here, so we can't even see that screen here because we we turned off that functionality because you guys got the web thing going and you don't really want it here at the main. Um, no, no, it does. You want me to show you? <laughs> here, yeah, I'll sure. Yeah. It. That's how we That's do it. That's the way to go. Really to Okay, we'll say, we'll go back to here. And we'll put, so we have $50 in there. Okay, so this is, this is checks. But if you uh -huh. go into the credit cards, okay, so right here, see where they're not matched? Down here where I'm pointing, It'll just sometimes have a random amount in there, and then. Uh, are you are you talking at the bottom of the credit card total? I can't see. Right. Do you see my cursor? No, I can't see your mouse. Oh, well, down at the bottom where it says credit card total or non-currency total, there will be Correct. some random amount in there. And then, if you insert, like, say we were short last week. This is it. an instance we were short twenty five ninety six. So this week I needed to insert the twenty five ninety six. It automatically duped that, like it was checked. It wasn't checked, and but if you didn't check it, but it put it in that total, then it duped it. I don't know what it's doing. Um, we have. Yeah, hang on a sec. Let's um, let's check something here. Um, And what kind of tenders do we do we take at this location? At this location, we take cash, check, credit cards, and charge. And charge. And right. So um, now charges you see are not checked here. Hmm. That could be a problem. Okay. So. 
So that means that they would be automatically considered reconciled. So they wouldn't come up to ask you to check them off. So if you had a charge in the period, it would probably already be in your total. And that works. Our and charges, that would be, they're never an issue. You have to up your total. Well, what I'm wondering though, is if we should turn this on so you can see it. And because if that's what's causing your problem, I'd rather identify that. And if later we choose to turn this back off again, well, that's, that's our call, right? But but you know, if that turned on now, um, you should see everything should be equal. You see what I'm saying? Everybody should be the same. Um, what's a what's a day that maybe you had a charge on by any chance? Uh, just go just go from the first. That'll All right, work. perfect. And then get rid of the workstation here. Yeah, we need to get. Do I? Yeah. Are you doing it or am I? Oh, you can. Uh, you, if it comes down to a mouse fight, you win. So uh, I'll, I'll let you drive anytime because you're always going to be faster at that anyway. So. Okay, there you go. So now charge is now showing up. And, of course, right. you can just do, go like this if they're not a problem, right? You can just click the top. Okay. You know, you don't have to go through every one of you if you already know the answer, right? And see, it's not but, doing it now. Well, but before, without this, without that turned on, these would not have showed up, and they might have, they might have started with that total down there. You see what I mean? Well, but it was weird mounts like one all on the same date range. I had one for fifteen dollars and fifty cents. I had one for forty-five forty. If I backed up, I was like finishing it I was trying whatever I could to get it to stop one for 45 42 which was actually an amount of a sell so I went back and tried to reverse copy correct that one to see if there was some jimmy up thing there then it was 22 45 then it was 39 42 just automatic and then all at once it be zero and I go oh my gosh let's save it <laughs> It's not like well, it's the total. It's like uh -uh. One it's like thing. one little tiny random amount. And I did it a hundred times, so that's why I know all four of those amounts. <laughs> well, these kinds of little weird, freaky things, you know, it's it's always a good idea to you got to track down what what it is and. It's not always obvious. It's not always apparent. See, that's interesting. So these don't show up. So those don't show up like that. So that's not it. Yeah, I would say that you need, we need so to. So try this. Let me show you this. Okay. So, so one of them was um, 29.45, let's just say. And we did this. Okay, so, oh, it's not going to work. Because now it's in here, right? It's in the credit cards. I put 29.45. And then I would try to select them and unselect them to get rid of the random 15.50. And it keeps the 29.45. You can't see, though. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can't see your mouse, but I see the 29.45 down there. And, and this is see? no longer selected. So Selected. Uh, that's kind of odd. So it would do that with with just pick a random sale like the twenty forty seven. It might just put that in there, and if you unchecked it, your your Z was off. If you checked it, it was off because it was duping it. Well, I think that 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 what you just did right there is is pretty obvious. I mean, it looks like. Um, I could duplicate that and I'm test it on my side while we chat here. Um, because but that was just one of the problems. The other ones were that it would automatically have, like, say there was one for $50, and it just, um, for some reason on that time, it chose to pick that one. Or And then if you backed up or finished it and went back in, it would have a different amount. It was really weird. I 
no, I'm just going to go check this here. Insert credit card for whatever, some amount of money. All right, so now mine's doing the same thing here so far. It's showing immediately. So I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to deselect everything. And mine sticks just like yours does. So I can write that up and, and ask them, well, you know, what's the deal? If I, if I unselect it, what if I made a mistake, right? If I, if I typed it in wrong. Exactly. That's my I mean, point. What, um, you know, then you should be able to take that back out, uh, and it's just going to keep bugging you until you. Um, right. Mm -mm. Can't. No. There's a delete button there. Well, it's still, it's still. See this. See the total down here. Yeah. Twenty nine forty five in the total. It jacks that up to where it just it won't go back to zero. No matter what you do, it won't go back to zero. You mean that twenty nine forty five? If you checked it. It's a no. delete. You can't do that. No, no matter what you do, really? it's a, it keeps oh a total gosh. in there. A different total. Oh, it might make a different cell. Jeez. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah, that's that's that uh, sounds like I need to write that out. I got like I got a few issues I gotta write up here. I gotta spend some time today just writing those up. Hmm. So yeah, I will I will ask the developer why why that is, because I mean, based on what I'm seeing on your screen and on my screen, which are both looking the same way right at the moment, uh, you guys, we both have things unchecked, but are still showing a total at the bottom. Right. And what? And before I even did the insert, that that was problem number five. When before I did the insert, um, if I went in there, so like say this top one for 10:49. I have a fresh brand new one. It might have just chosen that one and it this was all down here was populated with 1049 and it's not checked. It's not but if you don't check it, your end result doesn't work. And if you do check it, the end result doesn't work. And then if you back out and you go back in, it'll pick another different one. That's pretty weird. Uh, it was really weird. See if you can and this is harder. This is the hard piece, of course. See if you can figure out in, if it happens again. What steps? See if you can reproduce it like consistently. Because if you could say, "Do this, do this, do this, do this," and watch that thing's going to pop up now, and and we well, can that, make it then. And that's what I did. And I tried. If I if I took went back to the previous step, there was no way of clearing it out. If I finished it. It was a chance that it would clear it out. I would finish it completely, go out of X out, Z out. Sometimes I'd go completely out of Retail Pro and go back in, and it was still a gamble whether it would do it or well, not. When mine are messed up, if I just hit cancel and start over, I, I haven't had the problem of having to go all the way out. It wouldn't, no matter what I did. Yeah. I hit cancel, I hit previous, I got out of X out. I figured weird. out the uh, previous thing does not work. It's, like it previous is not a good thing. No, you can't go back. So anyway, I will watch it. It hasn't been an issue till this week, and it took me forever to get a good closeout at the main for, for that reason. Well, I mean, what we have found here uh, on both sides of the fence here, this, this thing here, I mean, I duplicated it immediately on my side, so I suspect when I write it up and send it to the developer, they'll be able to duplicate it immediately and identify it as, as an issue. But I'll watch, I'll try to figure it out. I mean, there was just no rhyme or reason to why it was pulling those amounts. I could not figure it out. And I did it, I felt like, 50 times. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's odd. Now, um, at the end of the day, of course, what I would probably do is I would, after I finished this, if I could, if I could get to work or if I couldn't get it to work, I would still finish it and then I'd go and run an X for the, for the time period that I was concerned with and just see, because right. yeah, X would just spit out what's real. Right. Which I finally, the way I finally got it to work was I ran it and then I said, okay, so this is how I have to do it. I have to insert the one that's, I'm going to be over before I can even reconcile anything just like I just did, and then go in and manually check every box that I wanted checked. You couldn't do the match all or select all, and then I could wow. do it. 
Now, when you're when you're when you're checking them all, you're you're not doing it with the mouse, though, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so so then this is a little tidbit, but you can up and down arrow with the keyboard, and you can use the space bar to check things off. Well, no, I meant yeah, like that, but I had to manually go into each one and check that right. off. I still, couldn't. that's for you. If you had three hundred of these, even if using the the keyboard, it's still going to be painful. Right. Exactly. So then the same day, one of our managers from the stores came in and said that, told us about the problem that was going on at the stores. I don't know if they're related or not, but theirs, their total batch that goes to the bank was right, but their debits and their credits were not right. With what retail pro showed. It's like Visa Jeez. didn't match Visa, MasterCard right. didn't match MasterCard. Did you hear that? Um, yeah. Um, now um, they didn't match Cayenne. Cayenne and Retail Pro did not match, except for the grand total did. That's kind of kind of weird. Um, I am going to ask one question now. Now that's the X E out though that we're talking about, right? Right. X or Z? She said the X and the Z did the same thing. Um. Well, with, with X and Z out, um, the first thing I would always do, and let's just go look in here like this, it'll be easier, um, is, um, let's see what do we got here? All right, yeah, any of these are good. Um, the filter criteria here on the top. So anytime you have an inequity where they don't balance, stop and very carefully go through that filter section right there where it, you know, it says a subsidiary, you know, store, work, store number, workstation well, number. We're not seeing you must be disconnected because we're not seeing what you're talking about. We're still on that Z out. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong one. Jeez. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm dialed into too many locations, so let's cancel this. Let's say yes. Having a good old time on my side, kind of like like winking in the dark, right? Nobody can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I thought that you had kind of two two. Uh, there's only like a dozen showing up. Like, that's way too few for them. I mean, they got to have way more than that. So um, clearly, I was uh, all right. So this is fine. So let's just zoom in on this. Um, so we can see what the heck we're talking about. So I'm talking about that that section right underneath the silly department total at the top, right? There's a section that says, uh, you know, source, subsidiary, uh, country name, store, store number, station, workstation, all that stuff right there. Right. So anytime you don't balance consistently over and over again, you want to make sure that nothing funny is in there. Okay. So, like, for instance, if somehow the date and time got set funny and they were they were cutting it off at like two in the afternoon for some reason because of a typo you know what i'm saying um that's so the first thing i would always check though so what they're saying is the time is right but the total amount their grand total through cayenne matches the grand total of credit cards and debit cards in their z and xl but the individual Visa, MasterCard, credit card, or debit, all of those are different than what Cayenne shows. And that's never happened. So you mean the uh, detail listing at the bottom is different, but the total match. Right. You're a little scrambled right now. Right. <laughs> your voice. So those that you're <laughs> Oops. Jeff, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Not so much. There's an audio. <laughs> Issue, so, so can you hear me? <laughs> Little uh, scrambled. Yes. Like if you water. talk really slow, we can. <laughs> okay. That worked great. Perfect. Okay. Well, I might. Be able to talk like that. No, it's not working. <laughs> no, anyway. you sound like you have like one of those voice boxes. Yeah. Wow, cool. So <laughs> should I do some rapping? Yes, exactly. We want to hear you sing. 
<laughs> right, so, uh, uh, and yeah, I to get Maybe we should disconnect <laughs> and reconnect. Um, yeah, I'm going to reconnect and see if, if it helps. Hang on, I'll be right back. Toby was not like playing baseball and he woke up and his face was all swollen. And so now they think that um, there's an infection um, where his tooth is coming in the socket where his wisdom teeth Ouch. were pulled. So that's what that's why I was jumping in now because they're like they Molly had that one. I know she did. And so he you know, they're wanting to call in a prescription. Merrill wants to call call in a prescription up there to the Walgreens and then um I must to see him tomorrow morning because they get back late tonight. <laughs> it's just like, she um, they kept putting her on and off these prescriptions for I don't know, months. months, yeah. And finally, the day after Gary had his kidney surgery, and she went over there and they went back in, um, opened her up. Right. Yeah. But this what's weird is this has been four months now since the surgery and it just cropped up. That's weird. Well they because there's a tooth <coughs> pushing up into there oh. and they think well, and obviously Merrill's, you know, here and Toad's up there, but this is his theory, is that there's a tooth coming into that spot. All right, is that any better? Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. All right, excellent. All right, that's exciting. No diving right, hang on a sec. Getting, like. uh, getting an update from Nick. Hold on a sec. Okay. That's good. Now we know how Alicia's doing too. server there's a little modem and we want to unplug the modem from the power Nick oh it's a, it's a USB modem so we want to unplug the USB port from the computer count to five and then plug it back in count to five, count five. The server on the left and you have to hop on one foot and rotate counterclockwise and, and talk like you're underwater I'm underwater again no, no, no. no. I, I tell Barb while she's hopping on one foot, she has to talk like she's underwater. Right. I tell you. Excellent. She's on it. Woohoo. All right. Right. That's quite a roundabout. Um. All right. So. So this this is a weird one. So you're saying all these amounts down at the bottom are, are wrong. Right, right. But the total, all cards total, if you add all and your cards debit and debit total, together, that's yeah. If you add amount. those two together, the nine where you see nine hundred sixteen sixty four, right here, yeah. and your debit. Yeah. If you add those together, all of this adds up. But your individual stuff does not add up. Well, the total, I mean, the, the random. So it still works, it's just incorrect. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, though, isn't it? I mean, that's just weird. I'm trying to think yeah. of what. I wonder if, um, I wonder if this setting here has anything to do with it. Um, so I'm going to suggest we play with this little, uh, this little, where is it here, report, this little setting right here, you know. <laughs> What was it on? It was on order taken, but I'm wondering if there's a problem in the design. I wonder if that design's overriding that. So let's try something here. Let's let's Just do this. Sunday night. Well, they could have taken it. Oh. And they printed it? Well, it was through the people that were working on it. it well, now, wait a second. Let's go back here for a second. Let's go. Uh, okay, so let's go into here. And here, 
All right, so what I would want to do is I'd want to compare like this design to say this design here. Oh, gotcha. I might do that. I could play with that a little bit. Because, I mean, this is a custom design I did, and it's pretty good. But if they change some structure, if they change something in Retail Pro uh, that I'm not aware of, they would have also changed their designs, right? And this, this design is the one that they update first. So they've, they've pretty much stopped updating that one, so don't even mess with that one. But, but that one there is pretty solid. So I would wonder if you go back and you look at that, that one there, right, and you check some of these older, um, on some of these older ones here and see if, if, if the, um, the detail section works, you know what I mean? Uh, okay. well, that's not a good one, obviously, but uh, you get where I'm going with that. Yeah, I get it. Um, I, I'm wondering if, if that's, if that's okay. the issue. Okay. See now that one, you see how they're all mixed up? Yeah. So now let's back out of here. So that's uh, the 410 one. So let's mm -hmm. go back to options and cause see for a while that setting didn't work was like two versions ago um, and when you went in here to reports and you said um, like I want them to be by amount it wouldn't it wouldn't respect your choice basically so I'm kind of curious to see now if it does respect your choice okay so we'll go back to this design and if I have to adjust my design yeah all right no problem I can do that Okay, so it's still not respecting your your choice, right? Are you sure you didn't say? It to, oh, you didn't say you said amount. Yeah. Right. So what it used to do when you said amount in version eight, but it, it would have organized these by amount by card type. So all the visas would have been together with the biggest one on top. Exactly. And clearly, those are not arranged by card type or amount. You know, right. 30, 26, 36. I mean, all right. The first three you can see were were high, were low, were higher. Right. So they're definitely not being arranged by by amounts here. Now, what I did in in my design, let's back out of this again. Let's loop back around, come back in, pick my design this time, and flip over to a, one of these. Now, I'm pretty sure that I went into the bottom. It's been a while since I've done this, but I think I went in, and no, I didn't. So this one's doing the same thing. This one's this one's doing the exact same thing. It's not changing color. Huh. Well, I, I would still test, you know, because my design is, is going to be older than than that, 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 that XE out 40 w with cards is going to be a newer it's going to be using newer schemas than mine. Uh, I only update mine when they change something and break it. <laughs> so if I need to go back and redo that, I will. But um, you know, I would I would play around with those different designs. Now, you know how to, if, if yours is not prompting, like when we go in here, it immediately prompts us which design you want to use because this, this workstation is not set for a specific design. Now, if yours is set, you know how to change that? No. Mm -hmm. You just go into options, workstation preferences. So it's in workstation preferences, and then it gets pretty easy. So the next thing you want to pick is, is printing, surprisingly, and then you want to pick XE out, right? And once you get in here, then you have to look for which printer is active. So you see right here, this active mark is not checked. So you may have to click in here and kind of down arrow and find which printer is, is active, right? So one of these should say active. And on the one that says active, you may also have preview checked out. I would. If I was you, I would I would want it to go right to the screen. I wouldn't want to actually see it on paper unless I chose to see it on paper, right? Um, but then right here, here's your design. So it would be set something like this here, right, like that. So here you could just go and change this to a different design, right? Right. It's work, it's right, so I'm going to leave this set up. Now, XPS Document Writer, since we're previewing, it's not actually going to use that, right? Because that's not a real printer anyway. But, right. but since we're previewing, it doesn't matter. It has a real driver, right? It, it, it can render a print job. 
that's the whole point. So let's go ahead and say uh, update and let's go back and try this again. Now, when I go to this thing now, it won't prompt me. See what I mean? It now knows what the answer is. So it just simply renders the print job. Boom. Do that. Okay. Yeah. But definitely try, try their designs and see okay. if, if you get better, more accurate information. And if so, then I just need to go back and revisit mine and make a new one. And, and, and if that's the case, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Now, if it's a problem with their designs too, then we're going to have to escalate this up and, and get some okay. other techs involved and maybe retail pro and see if we can figure out, cause that means it's a problem in the data. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. I guess that's step one. We'll figure, we'll look at that first yeah, and then go from there. The yeah. Yeah, we, we got to determine which direction to go. I mean, okay. hopefully it's just a simple design thing and we can just fix it with the design. Because I could take the, you know, I could take my my design, copy over the sections that are relevant to to a copy of that 40, and I'd have to narrow it. But that's that's all easy stuff. That's just nuts and bolts. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Oh, no, not a problem. Um, Jeff, I just want to touch one uh, base with you real quick on this whole PO thing, and it sounds like you and I are finally on the same page on that, um, on for having a PO that will give me correct vendor pricing. And it sounds like you recorded that with Retail Pro. Yes, um, I did, and, and um, looking I looking for that. I can't believe that like I'm the only person that this is happening to or has noticed this because right now <laughs> it's causing me a ton of time because every PO I write I have to change the cost. I have to go find what the true cost should be. Oh, 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 right. Yeah, that that well, um well, Pete isn't I, I can believe it only in that um you know, spreading cost is not is not very popular. It used to be it used to be really popular, but spreading cost has is, is sort of been is sort of gone by the wayside. I think uh, most most clients don't use it now. So do we need to? We we I still spreading the shipping. Yeah. So that's. Oh right. Nice. I mean, there are people that I, out of my clients that use it. I'm going to say that that you know possibly. You know, less than one percent of my clients use spread spreading freight. I I can think of two people that do right now, of of my recent clients over the last few years. Um, I mean, it, it still gets used, but it doesn't get. It's not in the mainstream. So I could totally see where where this could could crop up and and have retail pro not even know about it. A lot of other dealers don't even show people that feature. Well, the reason we start doing it is because our audit team that comes said that if you have that option, you should definitely do it because it shows the true cost of each item. But yeah, I yeah, maybe. Um, but, you know, but, my issue with it is it's a lot of work. But so we were spreading cost in Retail Pro 8, but then the rate, the still, when he went to write a PO, it was still the yeah. true yeah. cost of the item. And then that was my whole gist in my email. It's like that there's three columns. There's a PO cost dollars, there's an order cost dollars and there's a cost and they're basically almost all giving you the same information and it just seems like PO cost dollars. Well, but we, we need to make sure we understand what each of those well, is, you, is doing. Right. Now we, and you did that in an email. I, I get it. I mean, I understand it, but, um, but it just still seems to me that it's just, like I said in my email, it makes no sense that one of them would not have what the vendor cost is, what the vendor pricing is. Anyway, I, I just, I mean, I know you said that you had filed it with, with Retail Pro, but it is like right now, while we're still spreading cost, it's, it's, it is pulling that voucher cost, which is spread the cost every time I write a PO. Mm -hmm. I can stop. <laughs> I can just yeah. put the shipping in and not spread it. Yeah, but we don't want to. But then you're jacked. Um, with your system, right? I don't think I don't really know that it's that big of a deal, but you have to choose one way or another to do it. Oh, right. 
So let me when, when were the auditors so how long? Because it time. used to not be an option in your old DOS format. But then as soon as we got on retail pro and it was an option, they said you should do that because it shows the true cost and it averages all that out through your whole cycle. Which is a great thing to know. Right. But still, I don't know from my perspective, the cost is still what we paid for that item from the vendor. Freight is an expense that we take on as an organization. And so you still want to make sure that you understand how much it's costing you to have all the same shift. But I don't know that it's well, we've always hugely applied important it. that we know that we are applying that to every single item. But that affects the cost of yeah. goods sold by yeah. three, four percent on every single item. Right. I think that that it's a lot of work, and that that if you spread the freight and or discounts, then you don't you can't run reports on your freight or discounts to see what they are because they're spread into the cost. Isn't they're not there anymore. So you don't know if you're a 5% freight cost or a 3% or an 8%. Right. Because it's all being no, absorbed I mean, cost of goods for that item. Right. So a spread cost keystone versus keystone and add 5% because for freight, uh, six and one half dozen, you get to the same number either way, right? Right. So considering the amount of work it takes, um, I'm not sure it's worth it in that if you are smart and you know your freight percent and you're pricing things accordingly, you could just let it flow through and let, let freight go to the freight account. Now, again, you, you got to be in line with accounting. Whatever accounting is doing, you have to do the same thing. It's not really like you can just change this uh, willy-nilly. Well, accounting sitting right here beside me. <laughs> so she's going to check right. with our monitors and we'll see. Because um, it's early in the year. If we're going to do it, yeah. it would be best to do it sooner than later. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you tech with the auditors, I mean, I would say, look, we would like to know what our freight percent is, and we can't do that if we spread the freight. Because we can price things accordingly, but you just got to know what our freight percent is, right? Well, since they do a lot of people's audits, they must understand that most places don't spread. Well, they do. I mean, it was a choice, but they And that they was also 11, years, it, yeah, 11 then, years ago, and we yeah. haven't really talked about it since, right? right. So I also spread them. Discount I mean, it's our so choice how we do it. Amount would be uh, Well, you're right. I mean, I think that the reconciliation steps to get that freight spread correctly is is fairly involved, right? It, it would be a lot cleaner if, if we didn't have to do all those steps at the back well, end. It's, it's, There's no extra work to do if it. I just click a box and it says spread. Spread. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, now, wait a second. Let's make sure. So. So what you're saying to me, and I'm going to make sure we're all on the same page. I, I want to make sure that everything happens. So we we create we create a PO. PO goes to vendor, right? We get a, a shipment, right? We make a voucher when we receive, right? So this is the PO. We make a receiving here. Now at the time we make the receiving, do we have the invoice? Not always. Not always. I mean, later you might. Well, right. I would say that 80% of the time we probably don't. 20% we might, that would be nice. But yeah. but that being the case then, this receiving gets made for pretty much quantities only, right? We would make sure we got the right quantities. Yeah. Right. Then the invoice comes in, right? So we get we get an invoice. We say, okay, does this this equal? And it's the answer is always gonna be no, because this has right. freight on it, right? So we yeah. have to then, we then have to avoid this. We have to reverse this. And copy it and repost a new one, right? Or or return it, and then we have to add the freight in here on a new one, so that it equals the invoice. And then once these equal, then we can update this back and reaffect inventory. Does that make sense? No, we don't no, do it that way. Do that. All you do when it comes in is you put the shipping cost in. You go back. You don't you, reverse in the or, same uh, voucher. You can edit that. You don't have to reverse it. All right. Yes, you can. And when you edit it and you uh, first spread that freight, let me ask you a really dangerous question. Does it re-affect inventory? Do you have landed cost in inventory? Um, what? Landed cost? The well, answer to that question would be no. It right. Okay. It. So let's make sure we understand what's going on here. Okay, so 
So this. let me just draw you a new picture that's a little bit more detailed to make sure that we understand the flow of what happens okay. here. Okay, so, so when I have a voucher, and I have a voucher here, right, and I update it, it passes through inventory, correct? Yeah. And affects the appropriate items in inventory, and then it becomes a history document as a former voucher, right? Yeah. Okay. Once it's over here, it never again affects inventory. The only way it can be reaffecting inventory is if you were to copy it back it over and run it back through the mill. Does that make sense? When it does affect the cost. Right. Now, you absolutely affect the cost of receiving history but you're not affecting the cost. So if we had an item here that was $10 and it got updated, let's say we had none on hand, so then the cost would be $10, right? I don't want to do averaging here. We already understand averaging. So it's, uh, now over here, it's $10, but we then, let's say we have a, a, a freight charge that ends up being a dollar per item on the thing, so this becomes $11. Then that's the way it sits right there. It sits in history that we received this at 11, but it shows an inventory at 10 because we did not re-affect inventory. We just well, fixed history. Yeah, that averages at clear three. If that was the case, then Sam wouldn't have a problem That's at all. That's what I was just going to say. If that was the case, it wouldn't be an issue because then my, my PO would match e, what that was saying. Yep. Well, we could go find out easy enough. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go. Let's go take a look at. First off, let's just look at a voucher. Okay, so here's a voucher, and this is a transfer. So let's skip down to one that is. Uh, no, this is a regular receiving. Excuse me, this is a regular receiving, right? So let's go ahead and say form view. Uh, that has free freight. Already has an inventory. Okay, so this one here. Yeah. This one has no uh, freight. The, Perfect. That's that's better. I wanted to find Jeff, one. Jeff, Jeff, this company, the voucher that you chose, has free freight. Well, that's fine. We don't care. Okay. Uh, all we want to know is is what's going on. So, so if we look at, I want to see what's going on with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to peek at, and we should have inventory cost here, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Inventory okay. cost. Okay, cost. Okay, there we go. All right, so I want to be able to see right here comparing these two right here. Okay, so we can see currently the voucher cost, and we can see next to it the actual cost, right, which are not exactly the same, which is fine. Okay, so if I if go up here and put a freight amount in this, so I'm going to put like, um, I'm going to put $1,000, you know, because I want to see what happens here, right? And then we say spread cost of the freight. <laughs> All right, fine. It's now angry because, because I've already, of this. Already done. I already had an invoice for this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. So let's just delete this stuff. What we're going to do is... We're going to just undo all these changes. We're not going to save any of this, right? That's that's pretty much what we have to do. Um, all right, so the voucher cost definitely changed. Did the cost change? No. Well, I, I didn't write them all down. So. It didn't. It didn't change. No, I didn't. It was eight. It was eight six six one before. So let's go back. Spread unspread, right? Boom. Uncheck this. Okay, so it's eight six four zero, right? And eight six six one. And we say spread freight here. And it changes the voucher cost, absolutely. But it does not average back into inventory. Why are your costs? Well then why yeah, so then why is it an issue for me on writing a PO? Because it's pulling from the voucher cost. That's why. Because the PO pulls from the last voucher cost. Oh. The PO costs dollars. Right, well, Jeff? because I, I was assuming you guys were actually doing it correctly and that you were averaging it. You were, you were, you were turning the voucher 
copying it back over, reposting it with the spread for freight in it and letting it reaffect inventory the way that's the way you normally would do it if you were going to spread freight. The whole point in spreading freight is to have landed cost. Well, There's that's no how, benefit. That's how it worked in version eight. No, nope, never worked that way in version eight either. It would, it would affect the cost in the inventory. Ain't next contestant. <laughs> that's it's what no, I, I, I flew to Arizona for another client for that exact problem. And I, and I told them when they were training, you, you have to return it or reverse it. And then you have to copy it and put the freight in and spread it and then repost it to affect inventory. Otherwise, you just affect history. And there's no point in just affecting history. The whole benefit is to have landed cost on your sales. That's, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. So if you don't have landed cost in inventory, then you're, you're, there's no point in spreading freight in, in history. That I'd rather have freight to be a whole number. In fact, some people, now this is super painful, so I'm not recommending this, okay? Some people, they make the voucher, right? They then affect the inventory. Then up over here, they, they reverse this or return it, whatever. And then they copy it back over to a new one, right? They put the freight on. They spread the freight. They re-affect the inventory, right? And then when it gets over here for the final final, they then go back in and unspread the freight. So the freight then shows back here. So it, it is affected the inventory. We have, have landed cost in inventory, but their history is now not showing landed cost, which gives them sort of the, be the benefit of both worlds, right? They get landed cost and they get to run a freight percent. Uh, but it's just like one more step to an already long string of events that you have to do to get this spread freight thing to work. So I think now you're seeing why I, I said earlier, it just seems like the amount of work here may not be worth the benefit. Well, we don't do that work. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're also not getting the benefit. You know, you're not, you know. So let's see here now. Uh, back here, is there is there one of these that does have freight? Yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah. So that one right there, Blake. All right. So if we go here to form view on this, um, uh, well, you still spread it though. It's still spread it. It's still got to spread among the side. Right, so what we're really looking for, though, is somebody that's already been spread. So here, it's hard to say because, and, and really, if you're going to spread freight, well, we you have to spread freight on all transactions. Yeah. I mean, if, if you don't have a freight account, really, then then and it's considered cost of goods, then it's considered cost of goods. I'm not right. sure how that works in accounting, but I'm thinking accounting generally is pretty black and white. There's really no, well, it's a cost of goods on a third Tuesday with a full moon, but not really if it's a partial moon. You know, well, sometimes I've wondered that myself too, Jeff, because sometimes it doesn't it doesn't totally make sense to me. Like sometimes no, it, you, that, that's a very slippery slope, muddy muddy path. You know, if you're not consistent in this this process, then at the end of the year, accounting and retail pro are just not going to balance, and they're not even going to be and close. They don't. They don't. Every year, there's been a huge adjustment between business works and retail pro and inventory cost dollars. Right. So, so you got to get this this part nailed down. Now, I had another client, and maybe I mentioned this before, but what they did is they went the other direction. So instead of spreading freight, um, what they did is they just created accounts in in uh, in, in business works in their accounting software for everything. So when they made a voucher. Let's say this voucher had whatever it had items on there, and then the invoice came in, and they found that these did not equal, right? So right. what they did is that they would they would let the voucher stand. They would let it stand as is, and they would post the variance, like if the, if this this was over or minus whichever, they would post the variance into an account for variances. So they let the freight freight went into freight, uh, discounts went into discounts. And they had a, a variance here, and they would track all three, and they would settle up every six months, so that that whatever they received it at doesn't matter. Whatever they received it at, the buyer did the best job they could. The the vendor billed us at 12 cents more per unit, whatever. We would just post that into a, a variance account on the accounting side, 
and let retail pro stand the way it was received. And then they would then settle up with cost of goods sold. And with that variance, they could go and make everything bounce. And they bounced every time because nothing was ever getting edited. You see what I mean? So right. understand the other issue that maybe isn't obvious to you yet, but it is obvious to me that if we receive something and we have a hundred pieces, right? And that affects inventory, right? And that of course affects sales, right? Because some of those are gonna sell, right? So we got a bunch of little sales in here. And then of course we get an invoice, right? And on the invoice, we find out we did not receive it correctly. So we have to then go back and reverse the voucher, undo the voucher or return the voucher or whatever, and push it back through the system, right? And when it goes back through the system, we correct the receiving cost. That corrects inventory, correct? And right. it corrects future sales. Right. Mm -hmm. But it does not correct these, does it? No, it can't. Right, it can't go back and reaffect those. So at the end of the year, if you had a, if you had 97 of these down here that are correct, and you had three that were posted as incorrect, you are gonna have a small cost of goods sold variance. Right, right, and we do every year. That's well, I mean, that's normal. But now you see, if you if you didn't make that correction, if you just posted the variance into a slush fund for variances in accounting right and you let that thing stand as is and you accounted for everything separately you'd, you'd always bounce not sure it's the right thing to do i've only had one client that did that and they liked it but 90 percent of the people out in the world don't don't do that so i'm going to say you know maybe it's not the best course of action but it's kind of an extreme solution on their side well, it would clean. It would clean up um, all those big adjustments at the end. That's the end. yeah. You just walked. Ex that's exactly right. what he was he illustrating was just as to that, why we're getting those. That, right. that exactly. if you receive something and then you sell them, you know, at that cost before you get the invoice, and then you go back and change costs, you're never going to change those ones you sold. So you're always going to yeah, have that variance. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with business works having that big adjustment. Julia, had, right, so, uh, Julia just stepped out right before you started this last diagram, and she, then she just walked right back in. But that's exactly what you was addressing. Yeah, because that's been the issue all the time. You have you have one adjustment at the at a physical inventory, and then there's an even a bigger adjustment from the physical inventory making the accounting module match Retail Pro because it's been feeding those freight charges into the inventory account uh, through the accounting link. See what I'm saying? So basically what we're saying is that by not by not affecting inventory, we have a raw net cost in inventory. But because we're spreading the cost on, on the former voucher only and posting that into business works, the business works cost of goods is a much higher cost than the actual cost in, in, in retail pro and so at the end of the year they're, they're not even going to be close right so either we need to do it correctly in retail pro to then post it correctly into business works or not do it at all e either yeah. one we, we gotta make we gotta either do it right and get, get, you know get on board or, or or stop doing it right which we didn't do that before we got version eight but it was advised that we should do it, which created all this, which I had to follow it almost for a full year to totally wrap my mind around the different steps, the different steps in Retail Pro and, the, and what it caused in business works. Yeah, no, it's, this is a very complicated area, and this yeah. is the, the, an area of shrink that, that for almost every company out there, to a certain extent, even when you're managing this well, this can be an area of shrink. Now, if you recall back when I was, when we were doing our training, I, I, got a, I get on a soapbox, which I do a lot. I got on a soapbox a lot about the POs and about, about making these corrections upstream. And I still think that's by far the best solution. If you can, you can write a PO and send it to the vendor and get them to give you a confirmation with the corrections, and you can make those in the PO before you receive, you save yourself a ton, a ton of work. 
But you know, vendors, i.e., old dogs, don't learn new tricks well. I think that that's a wish. I do. I mean, I, I think they're not going to resp all respond. Yeah. I mean, well, you're, you're going to get 60, 70 percent probably of the vendors complying, and you're going to get some that just won't do it. The way around. Right. But, okay. I mean, we can try, but. Um, hmm. Well, I think we'll definitely revisit the script. Because a lot of them don't, won't even invoice until it ships, you know? And well, so, I mean, you know, remember, at the end of the day, technically, a PO is a contract. If they fill it at the cost you put on and they don't notify you ahead of time, didn't they agree to take that amount of money and, as payment? How often do, do... Well, now they don't match at all. So, I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know... <laughs> I mean, but before this, I mean, how often is that an issue? No, it's usually only like at the beginning of the year if they, they have price changes. But or if there's one price change. I mean, it's but not you can like put on the bottom of your PO if there are... Discrepancies. Yeah, discrepancies in the cost, please. Yeah. Let us know immediately. Or I mean, I, like you know, when I email them in, because I do email a ton of them as PDFs, I can just say, please confirm prices. Yeah. And see. Well, I mean, realize when you when you email these in and you ask them to send you back confirmation, probably 40% uh, of them can't send you back the confirmation. For whatever reason, their systems don't allow them to or they don't want to. That's what I'm saying. You know. I mean, I do always ask for a confirmation that they received the order. And I get, a, you know, that, but um, I can ask them to confirm pricing. Well, all right. You need a confirmation document that says you ordered five of these at this cost, and then you need to compare it to your PO and go, oh, the uh, cost totally different on that one. It went up 12 cents. I'm going to fix my PO before we make that receiving. Mm -hmm. See, that, that fixes it on the, on the front end. And then when, when we get to reconciliation, if all the uh, costs on the item is balanced, then we just add the freight. We still got to do the reverse it and we push it back through, but but the time to do that is far less than the time to troubleshoot which item is off. Well, right now, I don't have a starting point for my items because they're also they're all whacked out at this point. So, um, well, right now you have you have net cost in there, not not landed cost. Well, as it stands right now, there's no fix for this, but he did report it to. But why do you want? Uh, why are you so good to it? You want to fix for it? So I'm not wedded to it at all. Okay. They, they, we've always spread freight, and yeah. I mean, I, I could care less what we're doing with the freight. I okay. don't so care. So we don't necessarily need to have them spending time on trying to resolve this for us until we decide that we might be better off not spreading the freight in the first place. I'm kind of thinking we might be better off not spread the freight. But well, so why? Like, like I said, the auditors are. As soon as we got Retail Pro, they were the ones that were saying, well, if you have the option, you should be spreading the freight so you see the cost to each item. But it's the cost still of the freight goes to each item. So then at this point, it will still take me months for this to straighten out. Yeah. If we yeah. start spreading freight tomorrow, yeah. it's it's because it's going to, every time I write a PO, it's going to pull that voucher cost, which is, I mean, even if they got to fix it, wouldn't fix it, you know, I mean, it's, it is what it is at this point. It's a headache. <laughs> Because all of our all the costs are. But if we're not spreading freight, then the costs won't be. But there are. But, it, but it's already in. It. It's going to take whatever our last, whatever we just re received, whatever yeah. we have received already <laughs> to date is affecting that. Yeah. And that's where it's becoming a problem now because I'm placing reorders. Yeah. That's where you know it wasn't a problem on all those PLA orders because that was the first orders I placed since we had gone to version nine. But now that I'm. Placing reorders with some of these vendors, that's when all the costs are whacked out. And so I have to go figure out what all the correct vendor costs are when I'm writing a PO. So, I mean, then but that, just in the future, yeah. future, if we didn't do Once this, it's settled, it, then yeah, it'll, it'll shake it out. It seems like if you, sorry, but if you get your stuff figured out, then, and we don't do the freight, then it should stay. And whatever that is true cost. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you just take that total amount and spread it at the end of the year? Just well, that's say what you would spread it over inventory. No? Because you have to do the point. Does it already pull it out and put it into freight anyway? I mean what what is your 
number, where did your freight number go? You, you there would be no point in spending it at the end of the year if you got it's all history. Yeah, it's all history. Like yeah. It's no, I mean, I just have meant manually, to go. not in here. No. I didn't do that. I didn't so, do so right now, the, the is it, does it map to freight all that stuff? Or you just the over. leftover parts. Yeah. So the sense what that don't equal what, what spreads to the item maps right over into the inventory account number. Whatever's left over in the little freight, like the few cents or yeah. a dollar or whatever, that goes to freight. Right. Instead, if you don't, then your freight will go to freight. It won't go but when you say that then it doesn't get into you know, you don't know whether it's your pubs or your this or your that. You don't you don't have a way to say mm. what it was. I don't know that you really have this way right now. Doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Right. I, mean, you know, I, I mean if it I cleans it up, up let's not spread freight. Right. Right. Well and then it opens other doors to us because there have been we've we've been reluctant to give to not use our UPS account because then it doesn't spread the freight. You know, and so, I, you know, there's other yeah, there's vendors. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he's brought it up before. Yeah, yeah. we've talked about it several times, and actually, you're like, no, you, we don't want to do that because it won't spread the freight. Oh. <laughs> so, um, like with wildlife artists, just last week, they're like, you know, we just started a new vendor, and they're like, do you want to give us a UPS account? And I said, no, because it won't spread the freight. But I would well, love to. I'm yeah. totally on board with that. I'm yeah, not fighting it at all. I think we really try then to work that out. I mean, yeah. it was 11 years ago that this may have come yeah. from the auditors, right. but it also seems to me if Jeff is saying, it's you know, his clients not not are that are doing this, that it is a lot of All right. right. I mean, of course, I mean, it took years to figure it out, right? Yeah. I mean, I, mean like, I followed every single month. One of the things that you were trying to explain to me when I was first here, that was the confusing. most, and I had never seen anything like that before right. because we didn't cite. It, it skews your numbers strangely. Yes, and I do not uh, like that. All right. Well, that was, was that was a very good discussion. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You, Jeff. I think this could be really. No, helpful. not a problem. It's a hugely important issue, and <laughs> okay. absolutely has to be followed up on. Um, so we have 15 minutes left. I know you. Did you? Is that? Do you need that report? I mean, you want to? Does I anybody else have anything? That's, well, I think. I think whatever priorities you have. Support them, do we? I, I do, yeah. Jeff, and maybe that's right. sorry. What is your next? We're okay. Sorry. Okay, Barb says we're okay. And we, you have been back and forth with Alicia, and I've been copied on these things about the uh, subtotal situation and the uh, poll that the visitor can see. And my understanding is that the latest thing that we're talking about is the possibility of using the Cayenne machines, the credit card machines, to be the visual for our visitor rather than the poll, that we would basically take, not at the modem locations, but at the other locations, take the polls out and just have the visitor following the sale via watching the Cayenne screen. And if we can make that work, then that will probably be okay. But it is important to us that we have some way to fix this. You know, the visitor needs to see their subtotal. I, I think that's very basic, and I don't think we should have had to give that up because we're doing Roundup. And I, no, 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 no. I mean, I agree, and I've been, and I I've been know, trying and, every solution. But I don't want the the response to us to be, well, we, you know, that's on the back burner. Maybe someday, it's important. So I want to find out if we can fix it or not fix it. And one of the reasons we went to version nine, a big reason, was for Roundup. And so what's happening now with the cashiers is it's making it difficult for them. And I don't want their lives to be more difficult than they have to be, and I know neither do you. But it means to me then that we need to find a solution rather than just say, well, maybe someday we can fix it. You know what I'm saying? So if, if it's possible we can fix it with this approach with the Cayenne, okay, then let's give that a shot. If not, and I know I'm not a programmer, but it does not seem like rocket science to me that we find some step where we can get the roundup to pop up the way we want it to and still be have the option to show a visitor a subtotal before we give the, before we ask them about the roundup. Right. So uh, the um the device, the the um the the genius device, right, it has a screen on it, right? Mm -hmm. And on the screen it's kind of got like a split thing like this where it's got the items 
I guess, being rung up and you're seeing what you've been ringing up like here. And I guess it's like got extended prices and things. And anyway, down here at the bottom, it's got a little totaling section that's always showing you your current total. When you're at, when you're a cashier, yeah. No, no. So, so. I'm sorry, uh, you're okay. talking about the kind of screen? screen? Yeah. Right. So the device is sitting on the counter, right? And it has this little, little keypad cowling right that's here, right? Bad. And, uh, and it's sitting there basically right in front of the customer right, right there. They're, they're sitting right there, and this is like right in front of them. And all but, this information is going on right there, right in front of them. So the cashier is removed on the other side of the counter, but they can but, see everything yeah. that's going on. Is that happening now, or is that something we can make happen? That is not happening now. And in the beginning, when we first started this, the Cayenne was having to turn on. But I guess what the techs are telling me now is that that by default, all the Genius devices have this turned on. This feature is turned on at Cayenne's end, which means that basically all we have to do is go into our line display, and we have to change it from the OPOS driver you're currently using to the Genius device, basically. And, so and that's Alicia, step one. Alicia knows about this, and when, as soon as she got back, she was going to make an right. appointment to make this happen. I know, but that's well, and, and, and the techs are telling me that she can make a point, but she should probably just go try this. So anyway, so if she turns on this here, and it's already enabled at the other end, then that should be it, except there is in here, if you wanted to, you could go in here and toy around with the settings. Now, by default, it's on description one. And if we like description one, then we don't need to come here at all. But if we wanted to switch it to description two, we could, you see. And what is description two? Is the description two is the, the name of our product? Yeah, that's what we use. Right. Okay, what's the description one? It's a reorder code, so we probably do want to go to description two. two. So we know what. Right. So the steps then would be to to first go to the line display peripheral section and set it to Genius, right? Well, you got to have a Genius installed, obviously. And then number two would be go to go to the plugins interface open up the Cayenne Genius interface and select description two as the choice instead of one. So we get the proper description showing up on the screen. Okay. And then to go try it, to go, you know, put some items on a sale and watch the, the Genius device and, and watch this, the screen. And, and then when you click tender, see what's, what's going on on the Genius device when it's asking to round on the screen, right? That would be the way to, test us. Yeah, and the thing is, this would be assuming too that we can direct our visitor to be looking at that screen. Obviously, the, the beauty of the poll is that it's at eye level and they're looking at it. It's very, that's what they're used to looking at. So we would probably have to take the polls out entirely so they're not fixated on that and then somehow get them to be looking at the Cayenne screen instead. I don't think that's normal. I don't think it's that's what uh, people are and, and, and the question that Alicia had was that would only work on credit card purchases, right? It's not going to work on a cash purchase. Seems like it would work because you're no, 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 no. It, it works all the time. Before you choose your yeah. tender of. Yeah. Oh, it's just showing on the genius screen. Right. Okay. That's what all you're right. saying. Well, that was her question. So I was just yeah. relaying the question. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if this is one way to sort of fix it, then I, I think it's worth a try, and we'll see if that helps, and if that is helpful for the uh, I mean, I, I, I see your point with the shopper displays. The line displays are up and in your face. Um, mm -hmm. There's been arguments on both sides of that fence. You know, the other argument is that more and more people, especially uh, people in other countries that are sort of ahead of us in technology, right? People in Japan have been using their phone to, to buy goods for years, right? I mean... Okay. So, uh, a lot of people are used to looking at the pin pad right now. Uh, the culture is shifting in that direction, right? Um, oh. I mean, I agree that pull displays are great, man. They are, they're like, uh, like a protest sign right, right in your face. Yeah, you can't really that. miss them. But, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you know, the direction that everybody is going is, is to, to, to classy pin pads. And these are, these are just gorgeous pin pads with full color to screens you know, displays, and they're damn good looking. So, um, you know, the the shopper displays, they're a little like LED readouts. They're a little, 
they're a little old school. So Jeff, let me ask you this: What happens at the places that do, that they don't have the cayenne genius? Right. Then, then the only solution that I'm aware of at this point would be that that the cashier would need to. So if they're if they're in a transaction, right? and the customer is having trouble understanding what they're doing uh, on a transaction, and what they need to do is close the rounding box. So when they click tender, it rounds, right? So let's just go in here and start this and make it look like a real scenario, right? So they're, they've got an item on there, and they click tender, and the customer is not really <coughs> understanding it. They can always go no right here, let it go to the tender screen and just click this here, and they're back where they were, and they could now Say, look, the total is now showing you at fifteen ninety nine. Do you want to round up to make it sixteen dollars even? Okay, so let me ask you. I mean, maybe what we could say to them, which I truly hate because it kind of negates the roundup screen, is that they say no on the roundup before they even ask the person, because if they say no, then the subtotal is going to show up, and then they push tender again so that the roundup screen comes up again? You have to go make a donation. Yeah. No, all they have to do is, is, so if they, if, they, if they click no, it's going to take them to the tender screen. And they just click no, and then they click make donation, which we could move. We could put in the middle if we need to put it in the middle. But then they're on the tender screen. The shop, a real old, the oldest school shopper display has been updated. It is now showing you the total. And, and they're back on the donation screen. Now we could turn off the auto prompt, but if we turn off the auto prompt, as opposed to having them click no, they're not gonna remember to do it. Why well, right. can't they programmatically prompt the, the, the pop-up at this point like that? That's what we were saying. Yeah, and so why I mean, can't you just have the... the why, why can't you do that? Prompt? Why can't we have it pop up here instead of earlier? On the subtotal, on the I mean, it does page. it, yeah. If, well, if you can up here with make a donation why we can't right. why can't we have the automatic roundup pop-up to be here it seems like if you as soon as you hit your tender whether it was cash credit card as soon as you hit a tender box the screen should be able to pop up then to me right. well I, i've been around the block and around the block and around the block on this one with the developer retail pro um and with um and with you know, Malcolm, the third party developer of the, the plugin tool, um, you know, what happens is that in, in Retail Pro, basically what they do is they put in what are called hooks, uh, places where third party developers can program, add in. So in the big picture, you've got Retail Pro, you've got this receipt function, and in this receipt function, we have this tender function, right? Well, there's a hook right there. There's a place where Malcolm can bolt this donation thing into this tender function. And there is no hook after that. There's no place for him to attach into. So what I'm being told, and I'm not a programmer, but I'm told that, that so then I came back and said, you know, if you can't bolt in here, can you, can you click tender for us? Like, could you, I said, you know, can, can you give me a button? And then when I click this button, it's, going to say tender because I'm going to fake it. You're going to click the tender button for me and then you're going to go ahead and pop up the rounding screen over here. He said, no, he said he can't simulate keystrokes at all. He can't simulate uh, user input. So I, I don't have any recourse then. Right. Basically, the guy who wrote the, the plugin good. is saying it can't be done with the existing and Retail Pro is not going to rewrite the hooks. I mean, right. But they did... They could have done a better job when they wrote it in the first. I mean, it seems to me like if you're a retailer like you are or have been and you have understandings of this thing, it would be basic in your mind that a person needs to see a subtotal before they right. you can have a pop-up there. I mean, it just seems like if you thought that through at all, you would realize, oh, well, I can't just have 1195 showing up here because it was the last thing that got put in and then, and then hit Roundup. Right, but, but when Malcolm is writing this tool, we gave him a set of specs to write the tool to, uh, and, and there were actually, he was already, he already wrote the tool, but when he wrote it, he, he can't foresee what every, every client's hardware is going to be. You know, how that specific shopper display works and, and the totaling function was outside his, his radar completely. Um, you know, and I agree that, that 
I mean, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, in retail, I mean, if it says nine ninety nine on the screen and we're asking the customer to round up to thirty six dollars, they're saying, "What the hell?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, no. Exactly what you're saying. Uh, okay. Well, you know, you've given us a couple of options, though, and I'll give you a lot of credit for that. So the first one we'll have Alicia um, try the cayenne screen and, and this genius thing, and just see and, and see how the clerks react to that. And then we can say, you can keep your poll. One of the things that they're already saying to me is there's extra steps. You know, version eight was better because there was fewer steps in each transaction. So now if you tell them, okay, let's add a couple more steps and they're not going to be excited. But then if I <laughs> tell them, here's an option for you. When you, after you hit tender, automatically hit no on the roundup. And then it's going to show them their subtotal. Then you can say, would you like to round up? And if they say yes, then you hit the make a donation, go which takes you back in, and then you can do your and, and what do you so if they hit a make a donation, do they then put in an amount as opposed to if they're just at roundup and they hit yes, what does it automatically figure it for them? You understand what um, I mean? Well the, the the plugin isn't gonna change. So if you're doing that now, the answer is gonna be yes. If you're not doing that now, the answer is gonna be no. We're not changing the plug-in, and, and we're just changing the steps, so to speak. All right. So right now when the roundup comes up, it must show them what their roundup amount will be because they've told me at iSky, well, we tell them, you want to round up 19 cents? And because, so they must be able to see 19 cents. And then, oh, right. They, they can, right. So you're saying if, if they hit make a donation at, at the point we're talking about, and that comes up, is it going to show 19 cents? Or are they going to yep. have to... Your mind already know that that's what the pot what the launch is just saying. It is the same let's thing. just go let's just go confirm it. Let's make sure that everything is uh is the same, you know what I mean? So if I say, um, grab me an item here, uh what's a good item here? Let's see, I want something that's um okay, well all right, I'm just gonna grab something, let's see where we end up. 299 okay 319 is a good number right so I, I click tender now it's currently suggesting 81 cents so I'm gonna click no and then I'm, it's gonna pop over and I'm gonna click this again and it's suggesting 81 cents and it's still yeah, there it's the same okay so we could give them a couple of options and personally we're, we're me I think we're so used to the poll and the visitors used to the poll I'd probably take that step but what my fear is is that then these people are going to say no to Roundup and, and, and just finish ask. off the sale, sale and not do the ask. And that defeats the whole purpose. So um, anyway, a couple of ideas, though. Well, no, I mean, well, I guess, the, if, go ahead. If it's just ingrained where they do just close that and then they just ask, even as they're closing it's it, the it same we, process. you know, would yeah. you like yeah. to make and you click the make a donation button, it's all still right there. I mean, it is another step for them, but. Well, you but they would have already said no. Be, because no, so no the, the customer doesn't say no. We're, we're saying no. I know, but I, so I'm saying the cashier will already have said no before the subtotal comes up. And so in terms of they're making their pitch, so it's come up for them. They're going to say, do you want to round up? They're hitting no. And then the customer is going to see it. And so in this cashier, cashier's mind, they're going back. I, I, right. No, I agree with you. you. You're losing the prompt and you're losing that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it, what I was trying to say is if, if it's just, and I know it's different on the front line, but it's like as, you know, as it pops up originally. That is still you're, a prompt. You're, yeah. yeah, while it's still prompt, they can still be, they could be making the ask while they're closing that thing and hitting the other button and it's all going to be right there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so would that, you like to be round up to 81 cents? While they're clicking their no, and yeah, right, and, and open. I mean, it, again, it's, it's it is another step, but it's like it could be incorporated into the way that they're doing it. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. Okay, well, all right, so I'm going to add one more thing for you guys to discuss on this kind of topic, and that's this one right here. Um, you know, we could actually turn this off, right? Yeah, we, we do want that, right? right? Or are they ingrained now? Will oh, they just no. That's definitely not ingrained enough. <laughs> well, that's that's, you're not that's the question. <laughs> I just don't think they're doing it necessarily every single time. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that it should just be part of their job. You do do this. Yeah. Right. 
Right. All right, so here we are again, right, on a transaction, 319. And when mm -hmm. I click tender, it's not going to do anything, and I just click this and, and pop right in there like that. But I've got to remember to click it now. That's the problem with that, isn't it? Okay. For now, for a while. Okay, but then let me just ask you another quick. What if at some point during this whole deal, this person goes, oh, would you add this magnet to my sale? Can you back all the way out of this and still add things in? I don't know at what point when you hit tender, you can no longer back into um, a, your sales screen. You know what I'm saying? You're saying no. Until it, you print the receipt. So, yeah, you can back up and you should be able to add items and then you go back to tender and you can flip back and forth here. Okay. So, hitting tender does not keep you, I mean, it's not settling your sale. You can still back up all you want, regardless of Correct. What process well once you say print update you know once you once you commit it to printing uh, and, and 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 updating to history is done of course that's it that's the point of no return okay okay print, print update comes to receipt right. so um, I think I might license the prompt yeah oh we so, put the prompt on let's leave the prompt yeah. on for now. Yeah, I mean, I think that in the beginning, even if you end up turning that off, I think you want to leave it on during the transition until they become really comfortable hitting that other button. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The employees. Yeah, and, yeah. Because yeah. we get new people all the time. So for now, we'll 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 start working on these couple of solutions. So. Yeah, I think the the Kyan solution. I think I think it's the best solution because I think it's it's the direction you want to go long term anyway. Uh, it's just that these other locations are never going to have that option in in the hills, right? Okay, right. <laughs> Until we get them satellite, which you may happen to someday. To know what okay. other organizations Correct. have this roundup tool. Well, they have different, they don't necessarily have Retail Pro because we had the roundup tool at GTA and we had Retail so have Star. I mean, those with Retail Pro. Yeah. Somebody's using it somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> somebody doing Retail Pro might be. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. You are very welcome. That's not just, you're just so a wealth of information what? as usual. So the one thing that we didn't get to, which we'll we can look at again in two weeks, because it's only driving the warehouse crazy, um, <laughs> is that and we had, we talked about this before and it just hasn't worked yet. That whole um, the slip versus the TO and when they're trying to to proof it and. We, weeks ago, months ago, talked about using the TO item button and it still didn't sort it the same way once they went to the proofing stage, but we're out of time today. And that was the only other thing that was on Alicia's email to you. And I'll yeah, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, tackle that at some point. Um, you know, the answer I would go to would be to, to, to make both documents sort by something like, you know, ALU or something simple. And and That's force out. them to be in the same order. Well, that the TO can't be in L ALU because it's 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 print. They're using the TO as a pick slip, and it's got to mm. be in yes because that's how the warehouse is laid out. It can't the TO cannot be in ALU. So it's it's in bin location order. Where is the bin location stored? Uh, so is the, is the bin location stored in a certain field, like a description three or a uh, user-defined name or something? No, and it's not. It's they don't keep it. They don't keep it accurate either. But, but how does it know to sort it that way? It's DCS. It's DCS. So bin location so is, is sort of DCS. Well, I mean, the, the bottom line is we have to make both documents print the same way uh, now it, it's easier if they're a if they're a simple field because the problem as I recall is not just the print jobs but but that you're comparing it on the screen right right exactly that's so you're taking one printed document and you're comparing it on the screen to another document so you're taking your print right, so, and comparing it to your slip on the screen right so it in is. the print job, you can do a multi-level sort. I could say sort by DCS, then sort by vendor, then sort by style number, then sort by color. But in the right. screen, you can click on one column header. Right. So what would be the best solution would be to actually have a field like description three 
or something that we put bin locations in in the warehouse and that we actually sort by that in both the print job and then we come up on the screen you sort by that column to put them in the bin location order so that they are always in the same order by a like I said a simple field that that's easy to sort by so that so they we would Well, I'm just thinking, yeah. I mean, so we don't actually have, you know, the way we have it right now, I mean, we don't have a, a bin location for every single item, so that would be something that we would need to set up, correct? Right, yeah, I mean, you'd have to, like, uh, typically bin locations are like, like, the first letter might be the section, like section A, then you might have three aisles in section A, so A, three, and then there's a bin location, whatever, B72, or whatever yeah. you want to call it, right? So then... You know, you you have some kind of system that 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 somebody looking down and say, oh, that's a B for you know, 67. Okay, I know that's in section B aisle for 67 is the number I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you got to go through and label all that, come up with a system that makes sense to you guys, and then you got to go back and key all that into a field. And then when they put stuff away, they got to go back and key in the updates, right? Well, right. And, and if they move something, then they got to change everything they just moved. I mean, we actually just use a we use a row and a shelf at this point as a location. Whatever whatever system works for you. I mean, you can just do row and shelf. That's fine. But but yes, and and, and inevitably they're going to put something away and run out of space and have to put the overflow in something else. And then you then you got to say, okay, it's in it's in row seven shelf 52 slash you know row 17 yeah, that's, shelf that's 7. Not, I mean I don't know that that's the best fix for this I mean I understand what you're saying that yeah that would solve the problem but it's a it's, I, I don't have really time to assign that to the whole warehouse right now so if there's another sorting way you know besides bin location where we have it look at DCS and then and I think I mean, we've already been down the street. It's like if it could be do DCS and then ALU or DCS and alphabetical. However, we can make those match, but it's got to be by DCS. Then, or or DCS and then um, and then um, UPC. I mean, how are, whatever that secondary sort can be, if we can make those two things match, then I think that that would solve the issue. All right. Here's a weird thing. That I'm going to throw out. We're all about I'm, I'm not a big fan of this feature. <laughs> but that being said, um, what are you using description three and four for right now? We're really not. Um, description three, I did. I use for manufacturer. So if it's if there's a, you know, the manufacturer is actually different from the vendor. Um, then I enter that in description three and description four. I don't. I'm not using description four at all. Is anybody using description four? Well, you can have it. <laughs> so <laughs> description four is wide open. That's what I'm hoping. It is. Never used it. Yeah, yeah. it looks pretty. Um, looks pretty Blank slim and open. Yeah. <laughs> really, nothing in our filter at all. <sighs> you know, I'm looking for something that would be in there, you know. Vowel, any vowel, wheel of fortune here. Well, I'm not going to do the whole alphabet, you know. I mean, <laughs> but I'll I'll do like the numbers and the vowels, and if it says nothing and no item is found, then then there's nothing in there. You know what I mean? And description for yeah. Right, and that's that's what we're looking for is just to give it a at least a, a you know a good shot and at, at filtering to see if we could come up with anything, right? This is a really rarely used feature that might work for you. So if we say up here we want description four, and in that description four, we want, if we can get it to go here, we want uh, DCS code 
and and then you said ALU yeah that would be the nicest way to do it Really, all you need is probably six in that one, right? Right. I'm not sure if this one goes then to 15. So I, I use this thing so rarely that we really shouldn't need anything there. So that probably is not correct. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Options, system preferences. All right. All right, I guess I'm going to have to circle back around and, and play with that again. Uh, okay. Cancel. Um, I've, I've used this in the past. There's some tricks to making it work. But, you know, basically what would happen, just so that we're all on the same page, and you guys can feel free to play around with this. Maybe you figure it out before I do, but I'll take a look at it. But um, you'd have to go and click that fill product description button, you know what I mean, from time to time? From time to time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna enter new stuff, right? Right. So, uh, so, like when I'm entering new items, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's it's not gonna be automatic, is what I'm saying. Okay, click the wrong button. So yeah. you're gonna have to you you can do it from time to time. You're gonna have to come out here and say fill product descriptions. You're gonna get that to populate, but okay. new items aren't gonna be. They're not going to be a going concern out of the box, out of the chute anyway. They're not going to be, see, it's not populating. I, I've got to go read that. There's some weird phrasing that has to do with the spacing of those fields that I'm not getting right here that uh, I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, i got to go look that thing up and, and make sure I got all these in there correct. You know what I mean? I mean, first nine characters of the DCS, that sounds right. First six characters of ALU, right? And the length would be nine. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go like figure that out again and, and take a look at it and maybe I can get it figured out and send you an email and okay. make sure and then we can hook up with it later. But but uh, yeah, you're gonna have to, to basically populate that field from time to time, right? Right, and so by pushing that button, that'll populate. Right, and then you check it off and say, go go populate that description four for me so that we get it top to bottom filled in correctly. And then we could use that in our doc designs and we could use that on the screen. And that would give us a, a definite order that would be one field that would be a two-level sort. That's what we're looking for. All right, I will, um, I will add that to my list and take a look at that probably while I get my wife some lunch. Okay, we're all going Thank to lunch you. too. I think we're going to have to shut the door. <laughs>
<laughs> and Sheila can't get back in. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, Jeff. well, you guys have a good one. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Okay, well.